Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name's Michael, and today I want to talk to you about a book that's quite difficult, so you have to bear with me and we'll try and get through this. And that is Death in Spring by Mercer Road Rua. And this was translated from the Catalan by Martha Tennant. This book was released in 2009 by Open Letter, and I believe it was probably one of the first books that they published. I believe they've been running for 10 years now. And I believe it's still their most, their best-selling book. It's definitely one that really helped them establish themselves in the translated literature community and definitely one that requires a lot of attention and care because it is this wonderfully weird and complex story. And I think with a little bit of background, we can try and get through this and talk about this book hopefully covering everything I want to talk about. So this book was published posthumously and I believe she wrote it and tried to submit it for a literary prize and it wasn't successful and her partner at the time said well that's good now you can continue to work on this book and I think she spent another 20 or so years working on this book and tried to improve on the story but she never completed it and to me that sounds like maybe this book was going to be overwritten but I think that time she spent on the book really helped develop and carve out such a wonderfully layered novel and I think it really helped create such an amazing piece of literature that I would recommend to everyone. There is not much to say about Rotorua. Unfortunately, there's not much information about her in English. Maybe there is in Catalan or Spanish. But from what I've heard, a common thread in her literature is an unfaithful man and his wife struggling with that infidelity. And she's known for a lot of short stories, which I'm really excited to get to. Probably next year I'll read a collection of her short stories. And I mentioned this because she was a mistress to a married man and I think that kind of relationship probably influenced her a lot and really her writing then kind of feels like she's trying to explore what this situation must be like for the wife and I think that's really interesting. But with Death and Spring, I think there's so many different layers to try and explore and I don't have a great background in knowing Catalan history or Spanish history, but I do know that the dictator Franco did outlaw Catalan as a language, and it was a long time where Catalan wasn't allowed to be used. And I think it was about the 50s or maybe the 60s when it started to come back into use. And like that whole feeling of trying to wipe out a language is going to make for some interesting political elements in a story like this. There is a senor in a high tower that could be Franco within the book that really explores this weird relationship he has with the rest of the town in the book. But before we get into all that, let's try and summarise this book to the best of my ability. There is five different parts of this book and each part is a like jump in time. So it's like a coming of age story. And the first part, the narrator sees his father try to commit suicide. And in this co community, the tradition is to bury yourself into a tree. And what happens is Normally, they pour concrete down their mouths to stop the soul escaping, but his father was trying to commit suicide. He got caught, and the villagers poured concrete in his mouth and buried him in the tree again. So this is kind of setting up the type of weirdness you could expect from the story. But there's some elements there that really play out and I think are really important for the rest of the story. It's a weird little town. There is a river that runs underneath it and every year people have to go swim underneath the river 
and clear out the rocks to s stop the water backing up and the town from drowning. But this is a very dangerous job and a lot of people either die or they have their face ripped up and they become people without faces and they and these people are outcasts. So we've got this really complex story building up. Further on in the story we have the narrator starting a relationship with his stepmom and that relationship blossoms into a marriage but while that seems weird his stepmom's only two years older than him so there's this extra weird complexity going on in this story and then further on we have that relationship breaking down at the birth of their daughter and all this weird stuff is happening I won't try and rehash the plot because I think that's a waste of time I'm not really interested in rehashing plots but I want to leave it so people can experience the weirdness of the story when they read it and all this is pretty much a coming of age story for this narrator but it also is exploring this village and the people in the village and I mentioned the senior in the tower that kind of represents Franco and I think there's a political message going on in this story where they're cre creating these weird customs and these weird traditions not to not for religious reasons or for all cultural reasons but these traditions seem to be created to control and confuse people and the whole point of that really fascinates me because I think there's this idea that we've got these weird traditions happening and these people don't question it too much it, it's part of their culture it's part of who they are and you, as you read on you begin to understand just how much that is used to control the people and manipulate the people and it's a real fascinating exploration into politics and the way the Spanish try to control the Catalan people or the way that politicians tr try to control anyone else and I think that's what made this book so fascinating what made the book so interesting to me and I love a weird story I love a complex layered story and I think Death and Spring really had so much to offer and I feel annoyed that I don't know enough about the history and about the culture to really understand all these complexities and layers but I think the joy of that means that when I reread this book I'm going to get to experience some new things I'm going to be able to experience the story in a different light maybe and experience elements of the plot and that I may not have picked up the first time and I think this is a book that is going to require reading over and over and over again and I am so excited to have discovered this book because of that I think it's one that is definitely going to be a favorite of the year it's definitely one that I would recommend to people that are interested in exploring other people's cultures interested in exploring something weird and every time I think about this book I am reminded of Ben Summer the film which I'm planning to do a film review of later it might be my next video and I think there's some similarities to it it's the nature the sunny feel that I got from reading it I thought it was very spring-like it was a lot of sun and a lot of nature going around but then you've got these really weird traditions and this really weird culture to explore and that's why I kind of compare the two because I think it's an interesting way to explore a topic and I'm oh, interested that they both use these weird cultures to kind of talk about human relationship and the way we are treated or manipulated in different ways so I'm really excited to have read Rhoda Rua for the first time and I'm excited to get a chance to read her short stories which I'll probably do next year. Death in Spring was not the first Rotor Rule book to be released, but it is the one on the 100 best women in translations list. So I am trying to read most of the books on that list, if not all of them. And I think that having this book on the list really 
pushed it up by TPR. And really is a great example of her riding. I'm glad it was my first step into her riding style. While I love short stories, something so weird and so complex that will stick in my mind forever is definitely something that I appreciate and definitely makes me want to check out more of her stuff. And I'm curious, I'm hoping that some bi biographies come out about Rotorua's life because I think she had a fascinating life. I think there's a lot in this story that I am not grasping because it is personal and it is going to have special meaning when I learn more about her. So I'm going to have a look around for a biography. I don't think there's a good one around, but if anyone has any recommendations, please let me know because I'm just fascinated and I hope I've said enough to get other people interested in reading the book. I hope I've said enough to inspire people to maybe check out Rotorua and if you want to find me elsewhere, all my links to social media are in the description below and let's have a conversation about this book if you've read it and as always, thank you for watching. Goodbye.